Radio tomorrow, 1620 a.m. The Salvation Army community and religious leaders as well as the general public will join together on World Suicide Prevention Day and Are You OK Day on the 10th of September for the Auburn Together for Hope community walk to help raise awareness and break down the stigma commonly associated with mental health issues. Joins me on the phone, Major Paul Moulds, Director of Auburn Salvation Army Services, to tell us more. Major Paul, thanks for your time today. Good morning to you and everyone. Good morning. The Together for Hope march will commence at 6.30 on the 10th of September at Auburn Public School. Where will it proceed to? Well, um, we want to sort of make a real statement to our local community that we are concerned and care about these issues. And so we're actually marching down Auburn Road, which is the main street in Auburn, um, holding our candles as a symbol of uh, light and hope. Mm. And we're going to walk through to Auburn Central Forecourt, which is the main forecourt outside the main shopping centre in Auburn. So it's going to be a very public, visible way of demonstrating that we care about these issues. Mm -hmm. And who is joining the walk this year? Well, we've, we've been really thrilled. This is the second time we've done the walk. Last year it was an amazing community event. We had over 200 people from the local community join us and start walking down the road. So mm -hmm. That was great. And this year we're hoping for bigger and better. But at Auburn Forecourt, We've got people walking, then we've got some special speakers also. So this year we've got um, the, uh, Luke Foley, who is um, the opposition leader in New South Wales, but also our local member. Mm -hmm. We've got the New South Wales Police Commissioner, Andrew Scipioni, uh, who's coming to join us. We've got uh, the New South Wales Mental Health Commissioner, who's the person responsible for that mental health strategy and mm -hmm. programming mm -hmm. in New South Wales. That's John Fennelly. Yeah. John Fennelly, yes. Mm -hmm. And then significantly we've got... A number of uh, Canterbury Bankstown um, f sort of players or s former players who are coming to sort of add their support to the message that we're giving. And we've got there Hazem El Masri, Phil Sigworth, and Steve Turner. And they're people that are well known in mm, our local community. Mm, so mm. it's going to be a great um, opportunity for people to join together of all faiths and all, um, all organisations. What is the importance of this walk? Look, it's, last year's was an enormously significant event. Um, it, I, I think it's making one and an, an issue which is sometimes taboo, which mm. people are uncomfortable talking about. It's actually creating permission for people to say, um, yes, this is an issue that affects our community. We've got many different community groups, um, ethnic groups in Auburn. It's a very diverse area. And some groups, I think, um, struggle to raise this issue in their community. But this is a way of them starting a dialogue. In fact, last, out of last, since last year's event, we've had 80 people trained in suicide prevention and awareness in our community. So it's been a wonderful result. So I think that sort of awareness it creates is, it's been a wonderful um, outcome of this program. Mental health issues are in, true in many communities, ignored, suppressed or trivialized because unfortunately they do not show in an x-ray or maybe because identifying them will bring about a lot of guilt and responsibility on That's other exactly members right. of, of the community and, um, and of families because solution is not via a pill. Um, right. What would you like to say to the urban community um, who will host this walk and um, and and yep. and um, who is expected to uh, to respond to this uh, to this initiative? Yeah, well, there's a couple of messages. The first message is we want people to look out for each other, to be aware that sometimes people do experience um, mental health issues. They do experience people periods of mental suffering and anguish because of all sorts of things in their life, um, sometimes from trauma, sometimes from um, things that happen in life, uh, sometimes from um, depression and um, uh, chemical imbalances. So people experience these things and we want people to notice them in other people and when they do notice, to get alongside that person not to, um, uh, and to encourage them to reach out for help. So that's our first message mm. is around... Um, I guess encouraging the community to look out for each other and to be aware of the signs and to be able to help people to get to the help they need. And I guess the second thing is really to break down some of the stigmas and taboos around mental health so that people start to recognise that it is like any physical illness, that with support, with proper professional help, people do get through these things and get better. Um, and so it is trying to get people to understand that this is not something that they have to uh, fear 
and that is something that if you, we can get people to understand and get people to the right help, they, they can be helped and they can actually lead very functioning lives in the community. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When we talk of mental health, um, what are we including in the scope of this definition? Well, obviously a whole range of things, um, depression, um, uh, you know, feelings of anxiety at times, you know, that sort of anxiety and that fear that almost prevents you sometimes from leaving the house or um, things like that. You're talking about other illnesses such as schizophrenia, um, some of those illnesses that we have words that we're a bit fearful of them. Um, But all of these things are are treatable. Mm -hmm. These are things that if people get help they they can actually get through and they can actually live very normal lives in our community so we're including those things and i guess the other thing to be aware of is this is world suicide prevention day and one of the strong messages that we want to send out to people is even sometimes when people feel so overwhelmed by life that they sometimes have questions in their mind and they they have thoughts that life isn't worth living we want to send messages to people that it, that you can get through these dark periods and that with support you can get to the other side. And so on World Suicide Prevention Day, that's a particular message that we want to send. And I guess that's the idea of Are You OK Day too. Mm. Um, that's the other thing that we celebrate on this day. I know it's a very Aussie phrase, isn't it? Are you OK? Yeah. But what it's really asking people is to ask people the question, how are you travelling? How is your life going? How, uh, how are you experiencing life? Do you have periods of deep unhappiness or are you you know it's not really how much money you've got in the bank or it's not about you know what your wealth is but it's how are you traveling inside how are you feeling about life and that's what we mean when we say are you okay and there um, on this day people are encouraged to ask people and to take an interest in how people are going in their life mm-hmm. statistics paul for the period of, of 2011 2013 mm-hmm. show that there was over 20 deaths linked directly to suicide in, two in years, yes. the Auburn community. That's right. In, in Auburn. Now, uh, the That's first question is, one. yeah, how does this rate compare to other areas? Is it significantly higher in Auburn? Yeah. And does this figure include deaths occurring in ambiguous situations? Yeah. Well, the suicide, is um, when, it, 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 when it comes to counting people who are, are taking their life, and that's the, that's the official cause of death given on their death certificate. Um, that has to be, that's something that is very clearly um, what the person has done. What um, they're referring to there is there are a number of other deaths that occur in ambiguous situations. For instance, a car might be travelling down a um, street and it runs into a telegraph pole. Now, is that a car accident or is that a desperate person feeling so unhappy that they've actually used their motor vehicle as a way of taking their life? So these sort of what we know Mm. is that um, some of these ambiguous deaths, which aren't actually in the cause of death put down as suicide, but as, you know, a vehicle accident or, um, you know, uh, it's uh, falling from a a height or something like that. uh, um, Some of these deaths are most probably suicides. And so what they're really saying is that that figure that you've quoted is actually the minimum figure. There's most probably more deaths happening in our community that aren't that aren't um, recorded in that mm-hmm. way. So I guess what we're trying to say by just quoting that statistic, and you know, statistics only can tell you so much. I mean, um, what we're trying to say is, look, this is an issue in our community. Um, there are people who actually are feeling so desperate that they're taking their lives. So as a community, what can we do to surround these people with better support to actually, because we do know that suicide is preventable if we can get the right help to a person, but sometimes people suffer in silence and people don't pick up the Absolutely. signs, people don't notice, and that's what, su- what Suicide Prevention Day is trying to do. Absolutely, and and people on the other side um, feel it's that it's too big of a challenge, and that it's Absolutely. not their area of expertise. Yes. That's why interfere. Yeah, people are reluctant to ask the question, aren't they? they? You know, one of the things that we've noticed is that sometimes people say, "Yeah, I did think something was wrong with that person." They they sort of dropped hints. They mm. they, they talked about how difficult life was and how they didn't feel like being here, but people are afraid to get involved because of you know what does it open up what what where does that take them and again what we want to say to people is we don't expect people to be professionals but if we what we can do is get people to the help they need and there is some good help in the community on the walk at the end of the walk at um Auburn Forecourt, there'll be tables um, set up by some of the organisations in the area who'll mm-hmm. be giving out literature and uh, phone numbers um, where people 
you know, know they can actually ring uh, if they're concerned about someone or if there is an issue in their own life and they can get the help that they need. Great. Um, Walk for Hope will take place for the second year this year, as mentioned before. I want to ask you, was last year's walk a platform for creating awareness or a catalyst for action? Yeah, it sure was. Um, yeah, we were just uh, delighted, one, with the response on the night, because you never know how many people uh, are going to get out and walk. So it was great to see almost 200 people walking through the streets, holding their candles. It was a, just a, a wonderful sight. But then the main thing is that out of that, people signed up. So what happened in the community, and it will happen again this year, is that um, there was some free training offered, um, so a half a day or one day course in um, mental health awareness and suicide prevention Mm -hmm. awareness and then since that time I think almost 100 people now from the Auburn community these are people from um, community organisations people who are working you know sort of in the Auburn community have signed up and now undertaken this free training so these are people now who are a lot more aware and a lot more trained to be able to um, help people who are struggling with these issues so it's been a great result um, seeing the um, the way that this has sort of led not just to the walk, which was great itself, but through the year since then, people actually signing up to learn more and get more involved. So the walk once again is on the 10th of September. Yep, this and Thursday night. This, this Thursday, Thursday night. evening at 6.30. Mm. Um, and we're meeting at Auburn Public School. Um, uh, there, that's where you'll register, you'll be given a candle, uh, there are um, some placards, one of the nice things that we're doing this year actually is um, we're carrying signs um, in, in different languages so people will be able to write their own or there are some already mm. made in different languages just with that simple question, are you okay? So wow. as people walk down the street in all languages from our community there'll be this question, are you okay? Are you okay? I don't, sorry I don't know what it is in, 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 the, different, in the language that your people <laughs> might use, but maybe you can tell, <laughs> ask them that question. But, um, in Arabic, probably, <laughs> Is that right? Is that right? Uh, is that, and that's asking people, how are they traveling? How are you doing yes, in your, in, yes. in, with your life? Yeah, wonderful. Well, that's the, so we certainly will have Arabic signs, I can tell you. There'll be plenty of those. Absolutely, we'll in Melbourne. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll be marching down the road with these um, and these placards, just as, again, a symbol of that. So 6.30 at Auburn Public School, um, register there, then walk through the community, uh, through uh, Auburn Road, down to the forecourt, and there we've got um, a, a short half-hour ceremony with our um, special guests. We'll be speaking to the crowd. Um, there is some music. I think Auburn Girls High School is singing. Um, we've got Granville Hall- Boys High School, is do- their marching band is leading us off from in the walk. Um, their drumming band, which is a wonderful, really. Um, police cars are sort of leading the way too. Um, and then there's also a free community barbecue, mm. which will be provided to everyone down in Auburn Four Court. So it's going to be a great night, but a real night of hope and encouragement is what we're hoping. Absolutely. The whole community is definitely encouraged to be yeah. part of this and to make this statement out loud. I yeah. can't help but think, as you describe the march and um, and the energy there, yeah. I can't help but think of, um, of people who are, who, are, who are fighting their battle against depression and can't get yeah. out of bed as yeah. you speak now. Yeah. Exactly. To these people, well, yes, it's great to walk, but you don't know what I'm feeling. I can't even get out yeah. of bed. I don't have a motivation Absolutely. to live. If you could, st- if you could send a statement delivered to their houses via our airwaves, via radio tomorrow, yeah. Yeah. what would you tell them? I would want to say to them, we do understand that there are times when life is so difficult that you just feel you can't participate in life. But at those times, what we want you to understand is that the community has not given up on you that we do care and that we would like to reach out to you to get help that you may need to be able to re-enter life again now it may be you're on medication it may be that you've spoken to a doctor or to a professional but maybe some of those people haven't done that Mm. and what we want to do is try and reach out and make it easy for you to get that help and to sort of support you while 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 you're, you're in that recovery stage you know you might need someone just to come and visit you occasionally or someone to help you do some shopping or um uh, you know those sort of th- little things that seem such a big task when you're f- when you're facing these difficulties. We do understand, and we do want to reach out and help you if you can. And there are organisations in your community that want to do that. So. 
please don't sit there in isolation or lay there in isolation. That pick up the phone and ring someone like Lifeline or um, a, an organisation that will then put you in touch with someone who will be able to do a face-to-face visit to you. Mm-hmm. So if you can't reach Auburn Public School, definitely reach yes. the phone from wherever you are. Yes, exactly. exactly. Mm-hmm. We can get help to you. We understand you can't get to us that we could get help to you. Use the phone, use the internet. There are services out there that you can find that will um, you can actually ask for help on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Major Paul, um, the last question for you is to complete yes. this phrase. Okay, I am Paul Moulds. If two years down the track you do not remember my name or what I do, if you do not remember this interview or the walk that I've walked for this cause, I want you to remember these three points. If you are facing mental issues or if you know someone facing Mm. mental issues, I want you to remember three tips or three points. What would they be? Well, firstly, you're not alone. You're not alone. Even though you might feel it, even though that illness might be saying no one understands, Number one, you're not alone. Others have, number two, others have been through it and got through it. There are people that have been where you've been and they have recovered. You can recover from this. So number one, you're not alone. Mm-hmm. Number two, others have been where you've been and got through it. And number three, there is always hope. Um, no matter how deeply depressed or how difficult life is at the moment, um, there is hope because... Um, because there are so many services and so much um, modern medical knowledge today to help you in your situation. And please don't give up. Number one, you're not alone. Number two, people have got through it. And number three, there is always hope. and we want to reach out to you. Absolutely, us. there is always hope. Major Paul Moulds, thank you very much for your time and for, well, thank th- for you this so great much initiative. For, um, giving us the opportunity to talk about this, um, op- uh, this um, walk. Thank you. My absolute pleasure. This was Major Paul Moulds, Director of Auburn Salvation Army. Stay tuned to Sotel Gad, the radio of tomorrow.